<clears throat> okay, um, I wanted to make this video, even though it's not really an ideal time to make this video, because it's at night, and, uh, you know, um, you know, it's raining out, it's windy, but, uh, I really feel like I really want to spend, spend time, you know, making progress on, on the car and the repairs and, and, and stuff like that, so I decided... You know what? I said that I wanted to crawl underneath the, the car and do a video, so I'm going to do it because even though it's dark and rainy outside and, you know, uh, it's not ideal conditions, uh, I'm still just going to do it anyways because, you know, I'm not made out of sugar. I'll be okay. So, um, this is the transmission and, um, I guess this right here, up here, is the... The, the exterior portion of the clutch pedal which is connected to this which is connected to this down here and then when you press that it moves this which moves this so I'll demonstrate so that's that moving that's that pushing that and that's that moving that part of the transmission the clutch action which is pretty sweet um, this right here that's a stick. That's not a part of the car. But um, <laughs> this is the brake line. And it goes all the way back up in here into the inside of the wheel well area. And then it goes into the engine compartment. And then it comes down here. And then it travels down to the back of the car to the back brakes. But this right here is the front brake. Um, I kind of wanted to poke around in here and clean this up a bit. But I kind of didn't want to get any brake dust goo all over myself. This is the strut. Or the shock. I've heard it be called a strut before. You know, I don't mind calling it a strut or a shock. But pretty sure people might not uh, use that as the first first thing to call it. <clears throat> uh, there's uh, some spider webs there. Uh, nice home for some spiders. You know, that's a uh, greasy nipple right there. But it uh, probably could use a little bit of new, new grease on there. You know, uh... These tires are looking pretty good, but this is the only tire that didn't get any air. My dad came by with his 12-volt uh, 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 air compressor and filled them up, which is pretty sweet. It uh, really made the car look a lot better with uh, full air in the tires. I was pretty happy about that. This is connected to a, 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 a wire that goes up somewhere, and I think this goes into something. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm pretty sure it's not just there for... You know, whatever. Right, so this is the muffler, of course. You know, I don't need to, you know, tell anybody anything crazy. You know, but that's the muffler. It's, uh, it's loose. It's loose, so uh, that needs to be addressed. I also think I saw that it was kind of rusted through at some part. Um, this up here is um, probably like hydraulic fluid um, grease stuff. I'm not sure. This is the, probably uh, the torque tube i suppose not too sure about that that's the i guess the drive line going all the way back to the back of the car and this is uh one of the con concerns that i had about uh, the rust spots you know um you know i was kind of concerned about it oh don't want to do that too much oh yeah well gonna have to fix it anyways but it looks kind of interesting in there, you know, and this right here, that's a metal plate. The previous owner went and just uh, put some uh, sheet metal in there and screwed it in there. You know, he didn't want to do some welding, which I think, I don't think that was the best idea. I think he should have done the welding because it would have just been better for the car because what is left with his his method of not welding is these uh i don't know if you can see that too clearly but uh there's a whole bunch of screws that are just kind of sticking out of the car here you know and it kind of looks like it's like something that comes out of a a a, a mad max movie you know like uh with the spikes it looks like a death machine or something something like that so i think that he could have done a better job you know and uh did something better for the rambler but he didn't it was his choice i guess this is the factory installed the uh, rubber coating underneath the car that I'd like to replace one day 
I have that on my list of things to do. Honestly, there's not as much room underneath the car as there used to be. I remember when I was down here a little while ago, there seemed to be a lot more room in the car. I mean, underneath the car. You know, but maybe it's just me being a little bit uh, claustrophobic and scared shitless. I hope the car doesn't follow me. I have no reason to think it will because I have it blocked up with cinder blocks, but those are not as good as wheel chocks. I think I'll go buy some one day. This cable here, I, I, I'm sure, is uh, connected to the the e-brake, you know, and it connects over to whatever this is. Uh, this. <sighs> Oh geez, that's tight. But uh, this, this is, uh, I think this is uh, an e-brake activator. Uh, oh, well. <sighs> there. Now the block is underneath the underneath the wheel, underneath the tire. But I was pretty sure it was there already. You know. The other side was probably blocked up properly, but yeah, that's uh, this looks like it's uh, the e-brake because it's tight and it's tight against that uh, shock, that strut, and so I think that when uh, it got parked, my sister parked it. I think that she uh, pulled the e-brake handle, like the good brush driver that she is, and uh, activated the e-brake, which is uh, why I think it's tight. This is, uh, I guess, the the rear diff as it's called, the rear differential, you know, and um, if there's oil coming out of here, that's uh, a sign that there's uh, not a good uh, seal. I see. You know, I, I really think that's true. So that's also another, another, another issue I'd like to address, for sure. Those are the, Back suspension uh, assemblies. I'm, I'm. I was talking to some guy on the the AMC forum, and he was telling me that if I got a new engine, uh, that was a certain uh, kind, I would definitely have to get a different uh, transmission, and then after that, I would have to replace this uh, rear axle and um, rear suspension, and uh, yeah. I wouldn't mind doing that anyways, even though it kind of doesn't really look too bad. I mean, like, I don't really know a lot about how to diagnose the health of a spring for a suspension. But it doesn't really seem like it's too rusty. It doesn't really seem like it. That's the gas tank. I believe it's new. Err. Because I do have the fuel uh, gauge, uh, fuel level assembly in the in the plastic bag over in my kitchen. So I think that it's new and yeah, whatever fuel uh, level uh, measuring device is in there right now is not the one that is uh, in my floor. I don't think so. Okay, all right. I suppose I could show you this side. You know, that looks pretty good. You know, that looks pretty good. I guess that's uh, the brake line going to the back of the car there, or maybe the fuel. Oh, the fuel um, gauge wires. I'm not too sure where. I don't really see. Well, maybe they go through the inside of the car. They might. They might go through the inside of the car. Oh. I'm stuck. My hoodie is stuck on the wood board underneath the car. Well, that's going through to the floor right there. Yep. It's going through the floor right there. I was under here a little while ago and I tightened up this bolt. Or maybe it was this one. I think it was, I think it might have been this one. Yeah, it was leaking. A little bit, so I tightened it up. This is a... I don't know what that is, but it's connected 
the wire is connected from here to here. I don't know what that means. Oh, here we go. More uh, Thunderdome here. A Thunderdome repair for the car. Yeah, I'd really like to take that right out of there, you know. Fix it up real good. Do right by the Rambler. Oh, got a little a, a yellow sticker here on this cable. I think I might have just wiped off whatever writing was on there, though. This stuff is ancient. But you know what? That's okay. So is the Bible. <laughs> that wasn't a very good joke. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so that's that's it, uh, I guess, uh, for underneath of the car. I guess that's it for underneath of the car. Oh, this, I believe, is hooked up to that... Uh, that uh, oil gauge I was talking to you guys about that had the fluid in it. Because this is a see-through tube. I believe that's for the oil gauge. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> oh. And I believe this right here is, is hooked up to the brake somehow. And I think that right there is the brake uh, reservoir. For the brake fluid and these metal tubes are the ones that are traveling to the sides and then they pass through the wall which is kind of close to right there you know it, that's where it's close to that's what it looks like that's where it looks like it's going so i i i, I deduce that that's the brakes <sighs> that's the brakes all right guys well <clears throat> All right, I'm going to craw crawl out of here and go uh, make myself some dinner and read the wiring diagram some more. I uh, started making some sense out of it, which is pretty cool. And, yeah. All right, guys. Take care, and thanks a lot for watching. This is the 1958 AMC Rambler Part 4. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Take care.